lace. It's autumn, which means I need a new jumper. So let's crochet one. Guys, autumn is my absolute favorite, favorite season. It is my birthday season. My birthday is in May, so I've just always loved autumn. I love, I love the brown leaves. I love it all. But whenever it hits the start of autumn, something in me just clicks and I just get so, so happy. So of course we're getting into the cooler months, which to me is like crochet and winter season. I'm so, so, so excited to make so many more warm things. And Misa was here. Hello. She's brought a ball. <laughs> Anyways, you can probably tell by the title, but today we're going to be crocheting a jumper. Not only just a regular jumper, we're going to crochet a scrap yarn jumper, which I'm very excited about. A few weeks ago, I did a video all about scrap yarn and showing you an ultimate scrap yarn project that you could knit. I showed you different ways of making like multicolored yarn balls and all these kinds of things. Well, today I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we will have enough yarn for a jumper because that one was supposed to be a jumper, but I just didn't have enough of the scrap yarn that I was using. So I kept it as a vest, but I really want today's one to be a jumper. But if you watch that video, you will have seen these beautiful balls of yarn. So basically in that video, I showed you guys how to use like multi-strand yarn. These balls are actually all single strands of yarn, kind of used a magic knot to tie together all the loose ends. There's so many different colors in here. I don't know what order they're in. They're all in different lengths as well. So I think this is gonna be really, really cool to crochet and just watch the colors kind of like form and see how it all works up. I think they're gonna be so cool. So we have these two balls here. Again, I don't know if there's gonna be enough to make a full jumper, but we're just gonna get started and, and hope for the best. So, and I'm not really using a pattern for this. Essentially, I'm kind of just making like a front panel, a back panel, and then two rectangles for the sleeves. And then we're going to sew everything together. But of course, like always, I will leave down below any tutorials or anything that I think might be helpful for you if you want to recreate this too, along with my scrap yarn videos. So you can make these little balls for yourself as well. But yeah, today's video is going to be super, super chilled literally just a little crochet with me we've not really done one of these in a while because i'm not gonna lie i've been all up in the knitting i've been knitting so much lately guys crochet has had a little bit of a back burner so that's why i thought today i wanted to go back to my roots and just do a little easy crochet project so yeah grab a snack grab a beverage a tea a coffee a matcha whatever it is sit back and we're just gonna start crocheting this jumper Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you Play a favorite movie Playing right beside me I don't mind when it's just us two The corner coffee shop we like to go Late night walks with you to take me home Okay, update. I have just chained 80 and I feel like that should be a good size for a jumper. I want it to be a little bit oversized and baggy but not too too much so I think 80 is a good number. We are two rows in and we already have a little bit of a color change as you can see which I think is looking really cool. I think as well this is looking quite long and big but I feel like it's going to be a really nice oversized fit. So I'm very happy with it. I love the idea of this as well because it's like a surprise for me because like I said earlier I don't know how long each color is like it really surprised me when it started going black and then it was that like white and I'm like oh my god I don't know how much white it's gonna be like it's just so cool to kind of see the colors change and it's just such a nice way to be able to like change colors without me having to like fully change colors every time because it's all already done so now I can just like crochet away obviously with this way you don't get as much like control over like how much of each color there is because obviously if you were like kind of changing colors as you go you could like have more control over how much of each color there is but i think this is just like a fun surprise like i think it's just gonna be fun to see what colors are even in there because like i said i don't even know what colors are in this bad boy and just see it work up it's just it's fun oh yeah and i decided to do double crochets as well just because i feel like it'll work up a lot faster if i do double crochets <laughs> songs make me glad to call you mine and you so 
What are you doing up there? Miso! Alright, so we have an update. It has been a few days now. This week has been absolutely hectic and I've not had as much time to work on this as I would have wanted to. I have finished up the two balls of yarn that I showed you in the beginning of this video and it was definitely not even nearly enough yarn that I needed. From those two balls of yarn that I showed you in the beginning of the video, I was able to make a front panel. Isn't she so pretty? A few centimeters of, of the second panel. But I am just like obsessed with how these colors are turning out. Like it just is so messy and random and I just love that. I also decided to make little shoulder pieces here, literally just by decreasing on one side for the neck hole. So that is what one of the panels looks like. I don't know yet if this is going to be the front or the back. I think she's looking pretty cute. And yeah, so we've started now on the back panel and this is how far I got. So obviously we needed to make more balls of yarn, which I've just spent the past couple of hours doing. We have six skeins of yarn right here. I'm very hopeful this will be more than enough for a full sweater. Who knows? I might have to wind up more yarn. But yeah, essentially these all have the same kind of colors in them, but different lengths and different amounts of each color. So it's all, again, pretty random, just like this one. I'm gonna keep watching White Lotus and I'm gonna keep crocheting now that I have all these skeins of yarn. But I just wanted to show you where we got up to. We have a kind of vest thing. So I finished the front and the back panels. This is how we're looking and I just put it all together and yeah i'm super super happy with the fit it's exactly what i wanted it's perfect i love all these colors isn't this so cute we've also made an itty bitty baby start on this sleeve and i think i already need to start decreasing because it's enormous i'm also obviously working in the round for this sleeve just because i think it's easier to then get a gauge of how long i need it to be she's looking super cute so far Okay, it. it's been a few days, but I have some updates for you. We are like 80% done with the jacket. Not jacket, what is this? A sweater, <laughs> jumper, whatever you want to call it. I finished up one sleeve. This is what it looks like. I did kind of like a balloon sleeve, but not too big. And it kind of cinches in a little tiny bit at the cuff. And we are pretty much three quarters of the way done with the second sleeve. So we, I feel like we can definitely finish the crochet part of this jumper today. I do want to add some finishing touches though because I feel like there's just like a little bit that I want to add to it by knitting. I feel like adding like a little bit of like knitted ribbing for the collar, for the cuffs and for the bottom of the sweater will just like finish it off and make it look so good. When like knitting and crochet can come together, I just think it looks so good. So. I think that'll be kind of it though. Once we do that, the jump will be done and that'll be it. I am so happy with how it's looking though. It's looking like exactly how I wanted to, very like homemade, handmade, just messy, scrappy. There's some other things I wanted to talk to you guys about too. I love updating you and talking to you guys about life, you know? So first thing, and I feel like this relates more to knitting, but crocheters could probably relate to this too. I mean, you definitely could. Ever since I started knitting, like I didn't get this as much with crochet, but with knitting especially, I don't know if maybe like it's the movement of the knitting or whatever it is, but my wrists, especially like, like this part of my hand here have been hurting quite a bit. I went onto like crochet and knitting TikTok and a lot of people said to buy compression gloves. So that's exactly what I bought. These are literally just off of Amazon. They're just like these little fingerless gloves. I chose pink, of course. And yeah, they're like compression gloves. So I guess they kind of just like protect your wrist, your hand a little bit more when you are like using them. I don't know the full science behind it. I'm sure you could definitely find out more of the science 
scientific benefits from compression gloves. I heard a lot of people say that they use these, especially like professional knitters or just people who even have like arthritis or just problems in their wrists. Use these a lot and it helps them be able to knit and crochet a lot longer without having any of the pain. So I've been testing this out and I don't know if I fully see a big difference. I think I have to test it out a lot more. I haven't been knitting as much. I've been crocheting obviously because of this. Um, so I have to really test it out with knitting because I don't find I have the wrist problem with crochet. But yeah, I just thought I would talk to you guys about this because it's crochet slash knitting related and I'm sure my fellow fiber artists could you know, relate to this. That's something that I got this past week. Another thing I got this past week, and I've actually been waiting for this for so, so long. It is Tom Daly's Made With Love crochet and knitting. I was gonna say cookbook, just crochet knitting book. I'm so happy with it. I have been such a big fan of his like crochet knitting page. If you are a beginner knitter or crocheter or want to learn these things, he actually has like a lot, a lot of really great information on just everything. He has like sections on like yarn essentials, like talking about the different fibers and weights of yarn. He talks about different tools and just literally everything you could think of. He shows you how to do different stitches in like knitting and crochet. Literally everything you could want to learn how to knit or crochet is in this book. And then it also comes with 30 patterns. So I've already bookmarked a few. How cute are these leg warmers? I definitely want to make this balloon sleeve cardigan. It looks so good. Okay, this dog hat is a must for me, so I love that. And then also, I found this. Is this not like pretty much exactly what we are making right now? Isn't that so funny? That's also something I wanted to talk, talk to you guys about because I just, I just think that's cool. That is everything I wanted to catch you guys up on. So now you guys are up to date. Anyway, I'm gonna just sit here, drink tea, read my kindle and finish off this sleeve hopefully today fingers crossed also we have this much of yarn left to finish off this sleeve so fingers crossed this is enough because that would be really satisfying if this could finish off the sleeve We've got the jumper on! Isn't this so cute? I'm actually obsessed with all the colors, but now we have to pick the color of the ribbing and I have these four choices here. <laughs> and I just don't know what to do. All I can really do is like hold, hold the yarn up to my neck and kind of just try and imagine what the ribbing would look like. I don't think I want to do purple just because there is quite a lot of purple already in the jumper, but like a baby pink ribbing could be really cute even a red ribbon could be cute because this is the same red that's like a little bit scattered throughout the jumper so like a little bit of red ribbing just tie it all in or oh, i love this like hot pink ribbing i don't know what to do i think i'm eliminating the purple but i just don't really know miso which color do you like can you pick one no <laughs> you're very unhelpful miso Strolling hand in hand, exchanging letters when you're away. Don't need any effort when we are together. We always have fun throughout the day. I'll do anything to get your attention. Hello from Egghead Me. <laughs> are you guys ready for this reveal? This is a really weird angle. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna show you the jump now. Here it is. Oh, my gosh you guys i'm actually like okay let me pop you down this is a finished jumper i feel so cozy right now you guys isn't this so cute i genuinely think this is one of the cutest things i've ever made i'm so impressed with myself it gives full-on like homemade scrappy vibes which is like what the vision was i love all of just like the random color changes it's just so like not planned it's so just like messy and that's 
that's what I wanted. I just love it. Like, I also love the look of like mixing crochet and knit. Like I love that this full jumper was crochet and then it has like the knit collar and the like sleeve cuffs and even down the bottom here. The two things that I love mixed into one jumper. I am just like very impressed with myself with this collar. This is like the best thing I've ever made. I don't know what this method is called, but I did like a fold down method to like knit it up. I think it was like 30 rows and then folded it to the back and sewed it in the neckline. And it just looks so good. It gives such a nice little finish and makes it look so professional. Rather than just like casting off and giving like that kind of, well, this is what I did for the sleeves. Like you just kind of cast off like normal and this is the edge it gives. Like it doesn't look bad. This with the collar also just makes it so much stretchier because you saw before when I tried to do just like the normal cast off, it wouldn't even fit over my head. So this collar is like the best thing I've ever made. Um, but then I got too lazy to do that method for the cuffs and for the bottom of the sweater. I don't even think these parts need it because these parts don't necessarily need to be stretchy, but the collar, obviously very important that I could fit my head through the jumper. I am like so impressed with myself. It's like the most colorful, beautiful thing ever, but I still think it's quite wearable. Like, I don't know. I just, I love this. I also, when I was knitting up the collar parts. On the ball of yarn that I grabbed, I had made this half for like a different project that I never finished. So I just decided to, you know, finish off the heart and attach it to my sleeve because I think it's so cute that I have my heart on my sleeve. Isn't that the cutest thing? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed coming along and making this super cute scrap yarn crochet with some knitting jumper with me. This is like the perfect, perfect scrap yarn jumper. If you guys want to see another idea for you to use up your scrap yarn, I have done a knitted sweater vest video using up scrap yarn. So if you guys are trying to blow through your scrap yarn and use up your yarn collection i got you you should make this this is very cute or the knitted sweater vest as well that is also very cute please subscribe to my channel if you love crafting and yarn all of that stuff subscribe it's a great time here join the grandma club and you can also follow me on my other socials i'm on tiktok and instagram and yeah thank you so much for being here i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in my next one bye